Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we're talking about the spell Silvery Barbs. This is, I think, probably the biggest spell outside the player's handbook. Like, I think this is the spell I think more than any other has made a big splash that really gets people talking. Maybe the summoning spells in uh, Xanathar is like the summon beast and stuff. Those are up there as far as like spells that have really changed the game. But Silvery Barbs coming out of Strixhaven, which is like a book that has five spells in it. It really, it, it's it's a big end. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm I'm looking at the description and it it feels pretty powerful. Yeah, it's quite good. Because this is a first level spell, right? Yep. For <laughs> yeah. some reason. All right, go ahead, lay it on me. What does this spell do? So, silvery barb is a reaction cast time, and mm. you take that reaction whenever a creature you see within sixty feet of you succeeds on an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. Uh, it's instantaneous only verbal component, which means you can have your hands doing whatever they want, which means there's very few instances of time where a character with the spell cannot cast it. You magically distract the triggering creature and turn its momentary uncertainty into encouragement for another creature. Uh, that doesn't mean anything. The triggering creature must re-roll a d20 and use the lower roll. I, when I say this doesn't mean anything, it means I, I get annoyed whenever there's extra text that doesn't need to exist. Anyway. Well, I think, uh, I think that's more a flavor thing. Yes, it's a flavor. Yeah. Um, you can then choose a different creature to the creature that must re-roll the known success um, within range. You can choose yourself. The chosen creature's advantage on the next attack roll, ability check, or the saving throw it makes within the next minute. A creature can be empowered by only one use of this spell at a time. This is a first level spell for bards and sorcerers and wizards because they had yeah. to throw sorcerer wizards on every single one of the spells from Strixhaven Strix for some reason mm -hmm. and annoy the ever living shit out of me. <laughs> now, I, I, I guess I'm correct in thinking the attack because it's not even just an attack it'd be a saving throw or an ability check it doesn't have to be against you correct okay. it's any successful attack roll ability check or saving throw so the bugbear hit your friend speeds, yeah. you can say i'd rather you didn't and try yeah. again it's a, yeah wow that's that's enormous yeah it's in a game who's mainly weighted by the roll of the 20-sided die, right? The majority of the weight as to whether or not you succeed or fail on something is the outcome of a die roll. Getting to roll twice is big. Getting to roll twice after they've made a check with an advantage and then imposing disadvantage on it functionally is really good because how this works with an advantage is you know if they've succeeded or not based off of the outcome of their advantage. Now they roll an additional d20 and take the lower of their success or the rolled result which means you can sort of mitigate advantage with this irregardless in a way that's more powerful than just making the role normal, um, which is very good. Um, it is. I mean, that would have been enough right there. Yeah. And then it also has more text. Um, the rest of the text is very good. The rest yeah. of the text is. It gets advantage on the next thing it does. Now, granted, it doesn't get to necessarily pick the next thing it's doing, right? Like, if it's forced to make a save, it'll have advantage on that. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't, like, say they can expend this uh, silvery barbs charge or whatever to do get advantage on them they want. It has to be whatever the next thing they do is. Most of the time, that's what you want to be getting advantage on anyway. Most of the time, it's like, yeah, this is the turn I want to be critting, so let's try and get advantage on this attack roll with my paladin. This is the, I want to, you know, get advantage on the saving that's going to try and kill me. I don't want bad things to happen. I want good things to happen. The, it even might be like, oh, well, I have advantage on my next roll. Great, I'm firing off an attack roll spell. Great, I'm using my battle master maneuvers to try and get the most possible damage here. I'm, you know, sinking resources into the thing that I'm more likely to have the ability to do. I think Silvery Barbs existing as a bard spell is excellent. I think this would be a welcome addition to the bard repertoire as a very clear indicator of this is how bards function. This is a powerful tool on the support axis that works in exactly the way the bards want to. It is the, I make the enemy slip on banana peels and my friends are going to hit like a bus. It is very much entirely in the repertoire of a support to do this. It also is in a class then that doesn't have great access to reactions. Bard reactions tend to be like you have the subclass that gives them the, uh, the um, uh, bard inspiration reaction to like impose minus d6 to things. 
so that would be competitive with this but the other bard subclasses have a lot less of that kind of thing going on for them so you ha you're in the, in the market for more of a reaction to the bard if you are a bard i would 100 percent say you should take silver barbs on every single bard you can it will fit your play style exactly the way you want it to it is incredible in all tiers of play uh, it's a little bit worse in the early because that effect isn't huge compared to like some other potential spells can be as far as impacting low tier encounters but still, it will be, it will feel good if you're turning the difference between your barbarian getting smashed in the face to your barbarian smashing them in the face and dodging the hit, right? It will always feel good. I didn't even think about how this affects uh, the game at, at higher tiers because it's, it's nuts. There's no saving throws involved. It's, uh, None. Yeah. That's, it just happens. And yeah, it, that's it, fantastic. The cost is a first level spell slot. Yeah. Most of the time you're going to default to saying, great, I have four of these. Sometimes I'm using my second level slots and I have seven of these. And you can just throw them out when you need to while you're burning your fifth, seventh, fifth, sixth, seventh, fourth level spells, third level spells. And you're like, yeah, I've got silver bards always online in my back, back, back pocket. I'm burning through all of my spell slots in these fights because we're getting enough long rest because as I always say, the rest system is kind of broken and varies wildly table to table. So this lets your wizards unload their spell slots. It lets your bards unload their spell slots in a very powerful, meaningful way that radically changes the outcome of fights. This feels very much like Portin does, the, the Divination Wizard feature that is also a pain point for a lot of people, where you get to, you roll three dice per, um, before an adventure, and then you can pick three instances whenever a die is rolled, each 20 is rolled, to replace one of your rolled results with that one. This feels very reminiscent of the Lucky Feet, a feat that is banned, house-ruled at a tremendous amount of tables, because it turns disadvantage into super advantage on command. Like, it's outrageous, this is within the same wheelhouse. You are mitigating and altering the basic foundations of dice rolling when you know you need them. You aren't doing this on an attack roll that might miss. You're not doing this before an attack is declared to hit or miss. You're doing this knowing this can change the outcome of what would have been a hit. And that is a major perk in its favor. You're never casting this on the dragon whenever it misses its claw attacks. You're casting it whenever it hits them. And that can be the difference between literally keeping a character alive or not and having more silvery barbs to spare down the road. I know you're saying this is you know especially good for bards because they don't have a lot of reaction options but there's just precious few reaction spells in the game correct yes sorcerer wizards have access to shield and absorb, uh, absorb elements which i find yeah. to be two of the better ones as well they also have access to counter spell which is a very potent higher level uh, option to pick up in super power gaming tables where spell casting is sort of given um so they're slightly more competitive on it i get annoyed because because silvery barbs is so good you probably like if you're playing as wizard you have a robust spell list mm -hmm. i would highly recommend on most wizards if you're taking spells that you cannot prepare they should be ritual spells and the spells that you should be preparing you should have a good selection of things to do with your action things to maintain your concentration things to use as a bonus action things to have as your reactions this goes in that spell suite no problem this is the reason i think that this is such a pain point is for some people, I don't personally find it to be that much of an issue because I don't, I know a lot of players don't like this play style. I know a lot of wizards that aren't really doing, like, the majority of people playing this game aren't here to number crunch and make the best possible tuned characters as possible. That tends to be the majority of people that I play with, but I have played with power gaming people. And even they go, like, this just is, this is not evoking or supporting the fantasy of exploding somebody with a whole bunch of damage at once. It's just a really good spell that I can take functionally for free. That feels really shitty because now, you would on a you have a large list of spells that you're never casting anyway. This goes and replaces one of those because the things that you're doing that kills people instantaneously, that doesn't eat your, all your first level slots. And now you just have access to silvery barbs on top of also doing the really busted things that you've been doing before. On top of already having shield as an option, as opposed to already having absorb elements as an option, it just slots under your sheet in the mid to upper tiers. You never have to think about it, and you just have access to an absurdly powerful mechanic when you want it. Um, now, all right, so that's bards and wizards. Anything to say about sorcerers in particular? Sorcerers have less spells access, so it's harder for them to justify. Um, the, I think that's the class that really does have to ask, what is my reaction spell, not how do I get all the reaction spells by what level is that happening? Because that's wizard. Mm -hmm. Wizard's like, yeah, by ninth level, I'll have all the reaction spells that I care about. And for the entire rest of the game, they will always be good because of the way the edition was designed. For sorcerer you're limited pretty substantially as to your spell lists it's actually like a really big reason why sorcerers don't get played all that much um it's people that do play sorcerers like wow why is the wizard have twice the list i do what i don't get it um <laughs> and maybe you know, read the rules before you make your character 
sure but like it's like, there's also there's flavor reasons people want to be the innate yeah. caster people want to be the wild magic or the oh yeah that's be the totally me yeah and for that reason they're like well this feels shitty i should just be theming my my evoker wizard as a storm th- sorcerer right that's the better way to do it is what mm. it can often feel like in any case regardless of the power differential between those two the fact of the matter is sorcerers get less spells and that makes silvery barbs more of a competitive option you have to consider whenever you're also like okay well i i would really like to be taking upper level spells here to use in my upper level slots because you just don't have that many choices down the road you have to be very specific in how you build your sorcerer to make them feel particularly busted silvery in that the spell list is competitive of busted things to do this is on this is near the top of that list this is a very powerful very because of how cheap it is it's a very powerful very cheap option it's not necessarily that exciting and if you're already having shield you might say okay shield is good enough it's my reaction i'm comfortable enough saying i would like to have a ac of 24 right now i don't need to be dealing with this nonsense that you can say all right that's probably what i'll be using silvery barbs on anyways to make them miss i'm just gonna keep shield and go with something different all right. Well, that, uh, yeah, I'm trying to feel like there's more we could talk about here, but, um, yeah, I'm just kind of in awe of the spell at a first level spell. It's, it's, I mean, you say not that exciting. I, I think it sounds like a lot of fun to use. So I, I would get concerned that after the third time you've cast this, eyes will start to roll. After the sixth or seventh time, you're like, really you just can always do that and once you get into the mid to upper tiers you're just like well the only rolls that matter i'm making them re-roll and that also in turn gives the fighter or more likely you advantage on some attack while you're looking to weaponize and it starts to make it feel like you just have control over dice in a very unfun way that could be fun once or twice it could be fun mm-hmm. every once in a while it's again it's it's the diviner problem that i've often run into where players are like I mean, the divination fantasy was cool the first couple of times, but now it's like, oh, you just have the best dice at your disposal and know where to put them. And there's, we are comfortably safe to be like, oh, that thing's not going to kill us. We can turn this hit to a miss no matter what. And that starts to feel kind of bland. That starts to remove some of the danger. It starts to remove some of the the threatening elements of the game. It starts to remove some of the variance of it. And it can feel, it can feel a little bit boring. It can be a little bit bland just to be like, we don't have to worry about the black dragon. I can, un- silvery barbs it. It, it'll be fine worst case scenario the paladin will stay up and you know i'll get if it misses it misses and if it doesn't miss i can try and make it miss and that is a very powerful effect and it is a fact that will you'll be used so often that i think it can get redundant or not redundant but feel uh safe. i mean it could still you know miss i mean it's it still, can still it's hit. still can hit yes um it's and still your, your buddy's action could still fail that's true i mean advantage and disadvantage aren't the end all be all they're they're good but i mean yes they are meaningfully impactful whenever it comes down to i i think more so than looking at this even as disadvantage this is saying a known success can now be a failure that is the big differentiating point. Disadvantage and advantage can be like two 14s, two 18s. If they're close to the same result, it doesn't matter. It's the same here. If it's close to the result they rolled, it technically didn't matter. But you're also then still getting the free advantage to anything that is attached to it. It's not the, the advantage the ally is getting is not dependent on the creature then failing the attack roll. It's not right. dependent on the creature then failing the ability check. They just get it regardless. So the floor of this is reaction grant advantage to somebody. And that is great. That is something that a lot of characters would take. Re- it's a way to use your reaction in a meaningful way that incur- helps an encounter. On top of that, it also can turn known hits into misses, which can be wildly impactful whenever it's, they come down to the wire. Tur- eat, like the, Using this even non-defensively, using this offensively, being able to say, on your turn, I cast Disintegrate on the Lich. And the Lich goes, it passes the save. I go, Silvery Barbs it. Now you've doubled down on a way to get more access to powerful things to happen you used your reaction on your own turn, which feels ridiculous. Or if someone else can silver barbs you, I don't know if you can use your reaction. I'm pretty, I'd have to double check so. the ruling on yeah. it, but I think it's based on bonus action spells. I'm pretty confident you can use a reaction spell on an action spell during the same turn. Irregardless, it gives you a way to offensively tear down people's defenses when you know you need to. It can make spells that are already really powerful more powerful. It can turn a polymorph into a guaranteed disadvantage effect. That, again, is only disadvantage whenever you know you would need the disadvantage. All of this comes around to make Silvery Barbs feel oppressive. 
if it were only on bards, I'd be like, they kind of deserve that. Bards need tools like this. On wizards, they don't. Wizards are good. We can stop printing good things for wizards. They're doing okay. Um, so yeah, that's I think that's my where my thoughts on. And I don't think you should ban it at your tables if that's a consideration you're you're thinking about DMs. I know that this video, I don't know how many people it's going to reach, but uh, if you found this via the internet and Google millions. around millions, this is how we go viral. Um, I don't think this spell is necessarily banned worthy. I would just have a conversation with your players about their expectations for it. Um, and I would try to make it. I would look to say if they're taking it in the upper tiers, maybe try and steer them away. If they're like, oh, this spell exists. This seems really busted. I'm going to stick it on my character sheet. I'd be like, all right, maybe you, maybe this is something you could, maybe you wizard can take other really busted things. You're already doing really powerful stuff. You don't need this on your sheet too. I would gently ask this your way, but it's probably going to be fine if they do take it. Uh, if your bard wants this, line it up. This is bard's <laughs> wheelhouse. This is what your bards should be doing well. Um, this is what your wizards should also be doing well. And that's where my annoyance comes in the most, I think. All right. Well, uh, you got a rating for this one? This is a five. This changes the game yeah. fundamentally in so many ways. Yeah. This, uh, you know, I'm excited to use it someday. <laughs> yeah. Play it on a bard, though, Bob. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Oh, my God. <sighs> Fine. All doing? right. That was uh, Silvery Barbs. Thank you, Sam. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it, a gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.